Next, we move to the topic of U.S.-China trade war and trade deal. Um, what is essential for good American leadership? Well, good American leadership needs to put America first, not the world first, not China first. It's to put America first and make sure that America stays a strong, balanced economy that can, because economic security develops national security. And the, the United States, by virtue of the way the world has gone, has, has, has been the world leader, provided security to the world. Um, we've made lots of mistakes, don't get me wrong. We certainly have, um, but our intentions were always in the right place, and and somehow we got away from the fact, that recognized that we could do nothing in the world, we could not be the world power or a balancing force for good in the world, if we didn't have a strong economy, and which meant we needed to have a manufacturing sector. We couldn't give that away, and we did. So the first quality of good leadership for America, American leaders need to put America first. They need to recognize that all their success is based upon having a successful platform of the United States economy to build on. Instead, they've undermined their own ability to, to exist. Um, and so, number one, put America first. Number two, you need to understand the values that made this country great, made it the envy of the world, and you need to be true to those values. You cannot compromise on those values. Um, and so the, the, the leaders in America need to have strong moral character, strong ethical character, and they need to have a strong belief in the American system and the American Constitution. Um, and that has been sorely lacking. Um, that we have become, along with the rest of the world, corrupted um, and lost our, lost our way. President Trump is working hard to bring that back, create the right focus on putting America first because he knows a strong America will be good for the world. He also knows a dominating China will be bad for the world. Strong so, leadership is critical, but in this, for America, you've got to put America first. If you could give three suggestions to Trump's trade policy towards China, what would that be? Actually, I, I will give you three, but I will give you a fourth as well, okay? So okay, you'll, have to, you. you'll have to bear with me. Um, the first one, the first thing I would say to the president is stay tough on China. The second thing I would say to the president is get tougher on China. The third thing I would say to the president is decouple from China. The fourth thing I would say to the pres president is watch your back. China's tentacles are everywhere and they run deep not just in the world, but throughout the United States. Those would be, that would be the things, the four things that I would say to the president. Stay tough, get tougher, decouple, and watch your back. According to the, the USTR Section 301 report released in March 2018, China was found to have seriously violated its bilateral agreement with the U.S. Why has the U.S. tolerated China's violation for about 16 years? Well, listen, we've already covered that uh, several times, actually, in our Q&A so far, but I'll just summarize it. There was a mistaken strategy that the United States led and the world followed that said, if we help China develop, they will become more like us. They'll become a true world player on a level playing field where we can all work together and build a better world. And that we went out of our way to help them do that. The problem was that was never China's, the Communist Party's intention to allow that to happen. It was to take full advantage of that naiveness and stupidity and build their own champions and build an economy that would dominate the world not be a player in the world, an equal player. Um, and, uh, and our problem was there's been a lot of us for the last 15 years yelling, wake up, wake up, look what's really going on. But the commitments, the financial commitments, the political commitments, the Chinese tentacles that distorted our political system and our business businesses had taken such root that 
Nobody was willing to go through the pain to break free of it and to hold China accountable until now. There have been hundreds and thousands of us fighting this battle, but we were leaderless. Now we have Trump. And the key to success going forward and to actually giving China the opportunity to rework their strategy to be more what they said they would be to the world is to get President Trump reelected in 2020. What goals does President Trump's tariff war levied on China's imports aim to achieve? It's, the tariffs are just a small part of the overall strategy to get China to change its predatory ways, change its desire to be globally dominant, stop its trade mercantilism, and live up to the commitments that it made when it joined the WTO to begin with. Commitments that we did not enforce because of some of the things that I've already discussed. Um, and so these are penalties. These are penalties to get their attention. You know, when, when somebody refer, refuses to give you the time of day, sometimes you got to hit them on the back of the head. You got you to take and hit them in the stomach. You got to get their attention, especially when they're a bully. That's the only way you get their attention. And the bullies of Beijing are, 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 are running rampant right now and have been for a number of years, getting more arrogant every year. And, and so it took somebody with, with the strength of character and a belief in, in what he knew was right to stand up to China and say, enough's enough. Tariffs are meant to, to get their attention and to start and, and, and to come into to negotiations that take China back to the commitments they made when they joined the WTO and undo the predatory dominating drive that the CCP has engineered. That has to happen. And the tariffs are just the first wave of that. And all the people in the world and in the United States who are screaming about how bad the tariffs are, are the same folks that refuse to hold China accountable all these years and created the monster that we have. President Trump knows it's now or never. We've got to stop and turn, turn the monster around or things for the world will get much, much, much worse. And, and the long-term pain will far outweigh any short-term benefit that the people who say tariffs are hurting are, are worried about. The tariffs are a necessary tool, only necessary because of China's refusal to play by the rules that they agreed to. So do you think President Trump has achieved the goals of the tariff war and why do you think so? Well, first off, the tariff war was initiated by China. We've never responded to it until Trump. So the tariff war is a China tariff. The trade war is a China trade war on the world and on the U.S. in particular to undermine our strength and our leadership role in the world. They started this war. We had one administration after another who, for one reason or another, many of which the reasons I've already talked about, refused to hold China accountable. President Trump said that enough is enough. We're not going to let this go on anymore. So the, the war that you're talking about is Trump's trade war. It's not Trump's. It, Trump is responding to the attacks that have been going on from China in all sorts of ways. Espionage and IP theft and predatory pricing and, and, and trade mercantilism and and, and, and currency manipulation to undermine the global trading system instead of build it to a stronger position. Um, and this is China's trade war. It's the CCP's trade war. And Trump is just responding, thank God. And he's got the American people behind him now. And all the things that China has done and the unleashing of this virus on the world has just hastened the downfall of the Chinese Communist Party. The world is finally recognizing and waking up to the threat it and what it has done to China and what it wants to do to the world and the pain that it's causing. And they're saying enough's enough. 80% of the American people get that now. And the world is rapidly getting there. And their arrogance is, is the cause of all of this. And President Trump is the one who's made this happen by saying enough's enough and responding to the vicious trade war that's been waged against us in the world for the last 20 years. Okay. And 
What made the President Trump to sign the phase one trade deal with China? President Trump is, is giving China the opportunity to live up to its commitments that it made when it joined the WTO. It's created a process. This whole thing is a process. The first phase of the process was to get China's attention. That's what the tariffs were for. The second part of the process is to work through negotiations, phase one, phase two, phase three, to get China to stop all of the evil things that they're doing, whether it be IP theft, sabotage, espionage, uh, predatory pricing, destroying global economies to their benefit so they can dominate the world. And it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. It's been going on for 20, 30 years. You don't, you don't stop that overnight. You got to start a process that gets the people's attention and little by little turns that ship around so that we can get back into a more balanced global trading system and a more balanced global economy that's good for everybody and raises everybody's standard of living and is, in a, is not a, 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 a trading and economic system that says we win, you lose, which is what China's doing. And so it's a process. And if they don't show that they're willing to live up to the process, then the United States is more than capable and more than willing of getting tougher and tougher until they change their view of how they're going to proceed in the world. That's why when you ask me what three suggestions I give to the president, because I t believe it's going to take everything in our power to get China to change its ways, is to, to stay tough, get tougher, and decouple. That's the only thing they're going to understand. I pray that I'm wrong, but that's the only thing they're going to understand. According to Ambassador Robert Lifeiser, phase one trade deal puts particular weight on China's enforcement. Why so? Because the thing that's been lacking for the last 20 years is enforcement, holding China accountable, creating the pain that says, OK, we don't want this pain. We'll do we'll, we'll do what we said we were going to do to avoid the pain. We will live up to our commitments. OK, enforcement is the means to make sure that happens because China has not done it on its own. And it is critical without enforcement. None of these things will be achievable and things will continue to go in the destructive fashion they've been going. So uh, lately, as President Trump confirmed that China has failed to implement a phase one trade deal and his view for this deal has changed, what will happen next in your view? Listen, <laughs> I'm not sure that anybody in Washington in the Trump administration ever believed that China would honor the trade deal. Once again, my point is they we wanted to give them the opportunity to live up to their past commitments. Um, you do that by put, starting a process. But you put in place things that if they don't follow the process, there are we, there are enforcement actions and penalties, severe penalties for not living up to the agreement. Um, so I'm not I think everybody is always hopeful that that, that the right thing will be done. But I believe they all, and that's why they put these enforcement provisions, I believe they all thought that it would be a tough road and that the Chinese would do everything they can to not comply. And so far, they're not complying. They're mm -hmm. buying more, so more soybeans from Brazil and hardly any from us. You know, they say that they're putting, reducing tariffs um, on farm goods and what have you. Well, the proof will be in what they buy. Um, and uh, they're still attacking us. Uh, stealing our IP, hacking into our systems, just hacked into our grid. Um, it just continues. It, 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 and so the ultimate insult was the unleashing of this virus on the world and the killing of hundreds of thousands of global citizens and nearly 100,000 Americans. And it's still going on. It's still not under control. It's, it, it, we're working hard to get there. We're making progress. Now I hear that China's got potentially another outbreak in the northeastern part of China. They've now said yeah. that they're not going to export any PPE, personal protective equipment that you would need to, to continue to, to prevent the disease spread globally.
They're going to keep it all there. They keep demonstrating time and time again, again, they're not to be trusted. My personal opinion was they were never going to abide by this trade agreement, but it was worth the, time, the effort and a necessary step to take before the world would recognize they had to take stronger action to get China to come in line. 